Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. If you saw last week's video, you know I purchased a week's worth of groceries for under $7. In this video, I'm going to show four days of eating for a dollar a day based on those ingredients. First, a necessary disclosure. I will be using some pantry staples like oil, dry spices, baking soda, and as always, I'll be using hot sauce. Also, another necessary disclosure. This is an emergency menu. It is just to give you some ideas on things that you can make for yourself. This may not be enough food for you. Okay, here are all of the items that I have left over from last week's haul. I still have a ton of rice. I had the rest of this in the freezer until I wanted to use it. I have my Italian parsley, most of one carrot. I have four slices of the yeast-free bread that I made in the first video. I also have one and a half small pieces from an end here that I'm going to do something with. I have three eggs, most of an apple, some of these cooked lentils. I still have some of the macaroni, some chickpeas, the potato, the flour, and some more dried lentils. So I made three days worth of food in the last video and in this video I need to make four days worth of food. So breakfast, lunch, and dinner for four days. And the first thing I need to do is take stock of some of my ingredients. I wanted to see how much flour I had left over and it looks like I've got about two and a half cups. So I'm going to set two cups aside and then I'll use the remaining to make some pancakes. I was trying to figure out how to make an additional breakfast. If you remember in the last video, I only had six eggs and I'm trying to do this for a week. So I decided to use one egg to make two servings of pancakes. And then what I'll do is I'll just make the pancakes and set those aside for later. I think if you're a person that likes pancakes, probably one of the easiest ways to do this meal prep with all of these ingredients would be just to make quite a few pancakes and then put those in the freezer and then just eat them, you know, like with a fried egg for a few mornings a week and then just eat them on their own the rest of the week. If you wanted to go full meal prep, then you could just hard boil a few eggs and have those ready in the fridge. You could also make some bagels with the same ingredients. I was surprised at how easy it is to make bagels without yeast. The pancakes did call for milk, so I'm doing the trick where I use water instead and a little bit of oil and I used about a third of a cup of water. And if you have vanilla, go ahead and add it in. I'm not going to add it in just because it is a more expensive pantry staple and I'm not sure that everyone would have it. It always does turn out good without it, but it will add a little something extra if you have it. And I don't make pancakes very often, but I think that this is about the right consistency of the batter. And there are lots of different things we could add into this batter to season the pancakes. I was thinking I have some pumpkin pie spice. I also have this cocoa cinnamon sugar blend. So I think I might try one of these in two of the pancakes. But first, I'm just going to make some regular ones. I do have a griddle and I was thinking maybe I should get it out, but I guess I'll just pull off the edges here and make it look nice. Here is the first breakfast and I probably won't win any plating awards for this, but it was the best I could do. I sauteed the apples with brown sugar the way I did in the last video and I was able to get an extra small pancake. I added a little cinnamon 
to sprinkle over the top of the apples and this would have looked nice with some powdered sugar. Powdered sugar used to be a staple in everyone's kitchen and if you're doing much cooking at home, I definitely recommend having it on hand. These turned out delicious. They're fluffy and they're just really, really good. I love Granny Smith apples like this. This was one of my favorite discoveries of this video. I do agree with one of my viewers. It is better if they keep their form so you don't want to overcook them but they're super sweet and a little bit tart, which is a really nice combination. Here I'm making the second breakfast. I added some of the cocoa cinnamon sugar blend into the pancakes and I had just enough batter left to make two pancakes. So these are going into the fridge for a breakfast this week. And then I was planning to use a piece of toast with another egg, but then I realized I had wrapped up the end of the loaf of bread with a few small pieces in the towel, but I didn't add that to a plastic bag, so it got kind of hard. So then I thought, well, I'm going to toast it anyway. I might as well just cut this into cubes. I'll toast it in a pan. And then I'll make like mini bite-sized toasts. I'll add a little seasoning, maybe some herbs to it as well. And then I'll just eat the toasted cubes along with the eggs. But while I was doing this, I was thinking of all of the different things you could do. You could easily convert this into a bread pudding recipe, or you could make a frittata with this. That would be so good. You could add some little diced cubes of ham or even spam or roast beef, whatever it is that you have. What I'm showing here is not a frittata because I don't think there was any eggs in this. I put this toasted bread over a chili mac along with some cheese and some greens and it was delicious. But for a regular frittata, that's where you soak the bread in the eggs, mix in any meat or vegetables you want, and then add it to a casserole dish and top with some cheese and bake, and it'll be delicious. I decided to try a spoonful of this before I plated it, just to make sure that this was going to taste good, and it did. The only thing I didn't like about this is it didn't really fill the plate the way it would with a piece of toast. However, those little croutons were delicious. And this was the fourth breakfast, which is really the seventh breakfast I made in this eat for a dollar for a week video. One of my viewers suggested clipping the ends of the parsley and putting it in the freezer. I thought that was a great idea, so that's what I'm going to do. I had some chickpeas left over, and so I'm going to go ahead and cook these. What I should have done is cook them all together and then just added some to the freezer. And now I'm going to make a soup with some of my leftover ingredients and I'm going to use onion as a base for flavoring. I'm really into soups this time of year, so I was looking forward to this portion of the video. Soups always taste delicious and they're a great way to save money on food. I'm using this Mexican elbow pasta and normally before adding this to soups you fry it up so that it retains a nice texture in the broth and so I ended up frying that up in a pan and once it's crispy I'll add it into my soup and here I'm adding some lentils to my soup I'm going to add in 
some potatoes and I'll show you where I got those from in just a minute. I pulled that bag of clipped parsley stems out of the freezer. They're going to make a great addition to this soup. I've been using a base for my soups that consists of chopped garlic and ginger, and it's just my favorite. It has such a wonderful flavor, so I'll be interested to see how this turns out. I'm just really focusing on using the spices and then that onion to give a nice rich broth. And of course, if you want, you can add in some bouillon, but I'm just going with what I have here to see if I can coax a, a rich flavor out of these ingredients. This made four serving sizes. Um, I filled up these bowls and then I'm going to be using these croutons as soup croutons. I think they'll be perfect because they are more dense so they're going to hold up to the soup nicely this was really good this soup was reminding me do you guys remember i don't even know if they still make it i don't really buy soups very often but campbell's soup had a vegetarian vegetable soup it was exactly this color and i think it had little alphabets in it and it had carrots this is basically what it reminded me of although this obviously was much tastier and the croutons on this soup really elevate this. I think they should start selling these dense soup croutons in the store because it definitely makes a big difference in your soup. I would make another loaf of that bread just to make an entire loaf of soup croutons out of it. I packed my lunch this day and I packed a little hot sauce with it and the croutons and then I had some fried pasta which I'll show you in a minute. I just took that for a snack in case I got extra hungry and then um, I ate this for my lunch twice. I did show an extra three servings besides the one I ate for dinner but I actually only got two lunches out of it with this big container because I do take a really large lunch because as many of you know I don't always eat dinner because I get home late. So keep that in mind if you're making it but of course you could always make a bigger pot of soup there were plenty of other ingredients that you could have added in there, like more chickpeas or more lentils. I think the last day of the soup was the best. It just was so rich and flavorful, and I was genuinely disappointed when I ran out of croutons. When I was doing an extreme budget video, I discovered how delicious fried pasta is. I think I had accidentally overcooked the pasta and it was mushy and disgusting and I ended up putting it in a pan, frying it up with some garlic salt and it was like the best thing ever. In fact, some of my viewers had, that had watched that video said that they've been eating this ever since. You just drizzle it with a little of that chili garlic crisp on top and it is amazing. I'm going to call this a snack but you could have easily added the chickpeas that I had left over to this and it would have made a great dinner. This is also what you saw packed in my lunch. And the chickpea sandwich was so good the last time I made it, I decided to make another one. I had plenty of bread left. You know, this bread is very dense, so it's not like I would make this bread to make a like a regular peanut butter sandwich or something with, but Making it in a grilled sandwich is ideal. It's just the best bread for that. Okay, now I want to show you one of my favorite discoveries this week. I plan to use the inside of the potato for soup. And basically just bake these and then top them with a protein. I think I've made stuffed potatoes before with a chickpea concoction, some kind of chickpea mixture. It was actually really good. I don't remember exactly how I made that. I think when I made those potatoes, it was just regular baked potatoes with the chickpeas on top. But this time I was thinking about putting some lentils on the inside, but it was easy to just cut out the potato like this and then get a nice looking shell. 
So I use the potatoes on the right for the soup and the left I will use these for stuffing. While those are cooking, I'm gonna use my lentils to make a topping for the baked potatoes. And I'm showing two of the lentils here. I forgot the cooked ones on the left and I actually completely forgot to add them to this. So those ended up being extras. In another video I did this year, I discovered some spiced lentils and they were the best that I've ever had. And so I'm kind of trying to recreate that, except that these are not gonna be just seasoned lentils. This is going to be more like a kind of a soupy mixture. It's going to have more liquid in it, but it's going to be kind of thick. I'm adding sumac here. It has a bright flavor. If you don't have it, it's completely fine. You can also add a little bit of lemon if you have it or anything else that might be bright or just omit it altogether. You don't always have to have the same spices. Just use whatever's in your cabinet. I think you'll be surprised at how delicious recipes can turn out just playing around with the spices that you do have. And I'm only going to pulse this for a few times. I want it to be thick, but I also want to have some pieces of lentils in there. And this is perfect. It's loose enough to eat along with some rice and hopefully thick enough to go over the top of a potato. To get this thicker, all I would need to do is to keep boiling it on the stove and it'll obviously condense down. But like I said, I think this is gonna work out perfectly. My potatoes have a nice and crispy shell. And when I turned them over, I was pleasantly surprised to see that the edges are also crispy. If you wanted the whole thing crispy, you could have just turned them over and left them in the oven for a bit, but I don't really need the inside to be crispy because I plan to stuff these anyhow. And I think it's gonna be a perfect texture because the bottoms are quite crispy anyway. This would be a super simple way to make potato skins. Generally what you do is you bake the potatoes and then you scoop out the center when it's warm, but it can be really hard to get the right amount of potato left in. I just feel like this is just much simpler and then you still have a nice amount of potato there. So I'm looking forward to trying this. And I used the rest of my carrot and I think I'm gonna get two servings from the carrot. I basically just boiled them, not nothing fancy. And then I'm using the lentil mixture here for the protein and this is gonna be a filling meal. I could have made some tortillas or something to go with this. I do have two cups of flour left over. So I could have used one cup to make a thick tortilla like a chapati. I think that would have been good here, which is just a thick tortilla 
It's an Indian tortilla. I've made it on my channel before. And it would have went nicely with the next meal that you're about to see. But anyway, this potato was so good. It has a great texture with the crispiness, but yet it's also perfectly seasoned with that garlic salt. And I think the reason it tasted so good to me is just because I haven't had a potato for a while. One of the things that I do most on this channel is just try to show that you can have variety for not a lot of money. And the more variety you have, I just think the, the happier it makes you in terms of having to not eat the same thing every single day. This potato was just so good. I'm going to be using that method to cook my potatoes, I think, from now on. Especially to make some potato skins. You could easily throw in some cheese and some bacon bits. If you eat bacon, you could add some sour cream. You could make these baked potato skins and then just add a can of chili along with it and just make a really nice dinner and also maybe top that with a little cheese on top. That would be a fabulous dinner. I think the lentils turned out really well in this. I would make those again, but I'm especially looking forward to having these with rice. Here is my fourth dinner. In the last video, some of my viewers had talked about using that carrot in some different ways early on in the week, but I knew that I wanted to save that because even just a small amount of this carrot mentally does a lot for you in having it with this dinner. It's just that pop of color and just makes you feel like you're eating a better meal. Here is what I'll be eating for my fourth meal. And I realized I have lots of ingredients left over actually. I had this extra container of lentils that I meant to put into the other lentil dish but I forgot, so I'm gonna still need to use these. And this is going in the fridge for later. But I also had this large thing of rice left over that I could have done a lot of things with. And I also had this thing of chickpeas, which I think would have been great to make some kind of chana masala with to go over that rice. I do think I could have gotten an eighth day out of the food that I purchased, especially if I would have used the rest of that flour. I had planned to make an apple empanada for this video, but I just ran out of time. However, I did make a savory empanada in a video I made in June. I made that with potatoes, lentils, and mixed vegetables, and I served that with a strawberry sauce. I'll link that video at the end of this one. I'm also going to copy and paste my recipe for the empanadas because those were outstanding and you could use the ingredients in this haul to make that very easily. In fact, a lot of the things I made could be reproduced. I made some little flatbread, non-type bread. I used a lentil hummus and then I topped it with some cucumber and strawberries, but you could certainly slice up the Granny Smith apple that was in my grocery haul and it would have been delicious served in the same way. So there's always a ton of ways that you can use the ingredients and lots of different things you can do with the flour. If you're a regular viewer, I hope you remember all of the times we've made something delicious out of flour. And it's usually something that's unexpected because we're trying to make something out of the ingredients that we have in the extreme budget. And it's usually not something that you would normally just think that you would wanna try but it's something like this sandwich right here that turned out to be so amazingly delicious. We were using strawberries because those were on an excellent deal at Aldi. In fact, I made this in my lunch for the next day with the lentil hummus and the pieces of cucumber and strawberries and spinach, and it, it was just so good. I wouldn't have thought about this, but it just really made an amazing and wonderful meal. In that same video, I made some pita chips to go with the lentil hummus that I made, and that was really delicious. So again, the options are endless with flour. I hope you like this video, and if you haven't subscribed, I hope you'll consider doing so. Thanks again, and I'll see you next Sunday. Morning has broken, my windows are open. Wanna feel the wind blow through my hair. Which way do I follow? What happens tomorrow? I turn to you and hope you can guide the way. Sometimes I give up, just wanna be on my own. Even in the darkest times, you give me hope. 
so 